everybody, it's Tatler here at IRI, checking team number 694, Cypulse. To speak more about this robot, I have Max, Sam, and Michelle. And Cypulse here, two wins under their belt at regionals, Alliance captain at championships as well, too. Uh, I've been really big on Cypulse uh, this year. Really tall shooter, very accurate shooter they've had, and just an overall great design. We'll, of course, follow that complete ball path and some really cool programming coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many First alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Discover MSOE, where hands-on learning today can lead to real-world applications tomorrow, including their We Energy STEM Center, built to support FIRST teams. Head on over to msoe.edu slash visit to see a virtual tour and schedule your campus visit today. So let's start out ball path wise, talk about your intake a little bit. Talk to me about uh, just what went into it. Why'd you choose this? And it looks like you got a whole buffet of uh, wheels here as well. I'd love to hear more about yeah, that. So this year we decided to go for a more simple design because since while well, New York was pretty bad with COVID, we took a, we had like pretty much a knowledge gap. So we decided that our main priority this year was to be a good scorer, but also to keep everything simple. So yeah, here we have our intake. It's, it's, it's just a piston actuated intake. And even though it's not a four bar, it's been working great for us so far. And we have three different sets of rollers here. So first roller, we have these two huge mechanisms on the side and they're all 3D printed. But the important thing about these are that they're bigger than our plates. So in case like any balls are on the side, we're able to funnel them straight to the middle. And then since we're uh, keeping everything funneled to straight to our middle, we have these mechanism along with omnis and that just helps with our funneling process. And then lastly, these flaps on the two sides here. So this just helps make sure that one ball is prioritized over another when funneling. So two balls won't get jammed at once, yeah. So was that added like halfway through the season or is that something that's been Yeah, this the was an time? issue we noticed like later in the season and yeah. we decided to add these. So at first we didn't have tread on here, but we realized that tread helped like keep this one side to, to uh, it's more biased toward this one side, so it would go in first, and then it would stop the jamming. So as we go into uh, your uptake here and stuff, any other iterations and changes that you might have made throughout the season for them? Uh, yeah, so we decided to have this bump here on our, this is what we call our conveyor, which brings from the intake straight to our shooter, but we decided to have this bump on our conveyor, which helps with our eject mechanism. But first, I'll, I guess I'll go into the ball path from, so from the intake, it goes straight into this, well, I said conveyor, basically, and they're belted together here. So they're running at the same time, basically, from this intake and, and this motor over here, yeah. And after that, once it gets to here, we have our eject mechanism. So we decided to go for this, as many of you have seen, like really tall shooter because of our eject. We just, since like we needed this height for this eject to work, all right, so yeah, as you can see, like there's two ways for the ball to go after it gets to this junction, either up or straight out here. Like based on our color sensor here, it would either go up if it's based on the color that is our alliance or it would go out this way. When designing our conveyor, we thought it would be pretty important to have a, an ability to eject balls just so that we can run through a series of red and blue balls and make sure that we didn't have to worry about moving around opponent balls. Um, and to do that, obviously, we had to use a color sensor. However, a lot of teams have had issues with rev color sensors, yeah. whether it's through lag or delay. And we were also having issues. In our case, we were lucky enough not to have our Rio freeze like many other teams. But there was just a delay. And the way that our intake is built, it's such that if we keep running the intake, it will eject. So we needed it to be a little bit faster. So we combined our rev color sensor with a simple IR sensor that allows it to the ball to stop momentarily right in front of the color sensor so the color sensor could be sure what color it is. Uh, if we feed a red ball through, you can sort of see uh, it think a little bit. It takes a second to think about it and then it spits it out. And if it's a blue ball, uh, it's a little bit faster. Um, so that just allows us to be sure that we're not ejecting our alliance balls because that would be worst case scenario. Have you used this as like an autonomous strategy as well too at all, like actually picking up other other lines' uh, colors and injecting them? Um, so we did have thoughts about whether or not we wanted to run this in autonomous, but we generally decided against it because the time it takes to think about uh, if a ball is the correct color or not yeah. 
can delay our auto. It's a flip of the switch. We just turn it on and it'll run in auto. But generally, it was not worth the delay that it caused. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense on that. So uh, let's continue. We'll go into uh, your shooter next and talking about uh, what's designed for that. This, I mean, this is just a massive shooter hood uh, that you have. Looks like some cool 3D printing as well, too, on here. So I love to just hear about the composition all, all yeah, of it. Yeah, uh, so we basically built this uh, hood on a huge 3D printer. And okay. We did two separate prints since it couldn't really fit on the whole bed. But we were able to attach it to the plate, so this hood still worked out. And then we have a small camera mount on the back. It just helps with like t targeting balls when the drivers are driving. And yeah, and our shooter has, uh, unlike other shooters, I guess a lot of people had issue with backspin, and we we were planning to like have double rollers as well, but it was to the point where we couldn't iterate them in time. So we decided to go with just like a Lexan backing, and that helped with backspin a little bit, which is why we have like this Lexan and. Luxan piece on the whole hood, on the inside of here, which isn't really visible from this angle, but if you come he over through here, you can see it. And there's also a padding of yoga mat that just helps with like compression issues because the ball inflations are like are variable. Yeah. So like yoga mat compresses by itself, like has a natural compression. So putting that, like I guess you could see a lot of yoga mat on a robot, but this is the main use for it on this robot, which is to help with the hood compression. And that's something like helped out, helped us out a lot. Yeah. I love teams that find like practical uses yeah. for like just household materials a lot of times for things. I think that's really cool on there. Um, when you were looking uh, from your shoot around here, so uh, obviously on your uh, robot here, you're going with a non sword drive and you don't have a turret or anything like that. When you were approaching the game, your robot still shoots so quick, like your cycle times are so great. Like, what do you think attributes to that of still having one of the best tele off scores in first, yet you don't have a turret, you don't have swerve? I think a big part of this is just keeping our shot consistent, keeping it at the right RPM. So we have two two different rollers. One's a feeder roller, which brings the ball up to speed. And then the second roller is our shooter roller, which has the flywheel. And the yeah. flywheel just helps keep the consistency. And this is what we bought on a SDS special drive, which is just the brass flywheel, which some teams may have also been using, which is, yeah, it just helps, in, helps with keeping it at a consistent RPM. And then I guess one more thing about our shooter is we decided to go for a two position piston actuated shooter. If you could fire that, Moms. Yeah, so we have one shot for our fender shot, which is right up against the hub. And another one is around that ring that's slightly over the tarmac. And that's our second shot. And then throughout the season, later on, we realized even though this angle wasn't optimal, we could also do a shot from the launch pad. And that's been getting around like 80% like accuracy. And we've been happy with that. And we sometimes use it. Yeah. Well, Max, I appreciate hearing about that ball path in here. Sam, is there anything uh, else from uh, a programming side? I know we talked about the color sensor and show that off, uh, but how about from like a, a turret, or a, not a turret, but a shooter area or anything else through the ball pathing from a programming side? Uh, yeah, so our shooter this year was very similar to our 2020 shooter, which allowed us to really iterate on the software that we had beforehand. Um, we've always noticed that there's been issues with the limelight in terms of accuracy or update rate. Um, which leads to inconsistent shots. So a lot of our time on the software side has been spent really getting the limelight and the encoders to work in unison so that our robot knows exactly where it is on the field. And that's how we're really able to get those accurate shots. Uh, we don't vary our RPM because we didn't really have the time or budget to set up a field and tune every position. Sure. So we decided to just stick at one distance with one RPM, which made it very easy to tune for an accurate shot. And uh, it's worked pretty well, and it's allowed us to get consistent shots despite having relatively low testing time. I mean, I think it's worked excellent, in my opinion. I mean, like, like I said, I think your, your team just is doing more with less than me circumstances, and yet it does it so well. So I just love to hear about that, uh, how you approach that with sometimes having the less materials to go that path. Uh, let's uh, start to wind up. Let's talk about your climber uh, a little bit more and what's going into that. I know we'll talk about some of the different uh, positions and the mechanical aspect, and then maybe show up uh, just how uh, each uh, part of the climber where it's at and kind of describe that a little bit more. All right, so our climber is pretty standard. Um, it's pretty similar to a lot of other climbers that you'll see here today. We have two passive hooks that uh, hook on to the bar and an active climber that climbs up to each level and it scales the whole um, hanger like a ladder almost. This tilts back and forth uh, to make sure that we can go up to both high and traversal depending on which side of the double hooded hook that we hang on. 
Uh, something interesting about this climber is definitely the outer stage, which is entirely made out of uh, plastic. Uh, we, uh, we were originally going to use aluminum, but we ended up running out of weight and we thought that we could just replace it with aluminum later. But once we swapped it out, we actually realized this restricted our movement a lot. Not only did it add a ton of weight, but now we couldn't even flex back and forth when it swung a little bit. And it kind of just tore itself apart and snapped a lot of ball bearings. So uh, using a different material for this outer stage really helped. We also have some reinforced uh, uh, pieces on the bottom where we just shove wood in between the two plates to make sure that they don't bend or crack as often. So these passive hooks are pretty sturdy. We colored these in to make them look a bit more sophisticated, but these are just pieces of wood. And down here, it's also filled with wood. And you'll also notice there's this huge piece of rope. This is originally because uh, when we climbed, we realized that we couldn't actually reach the next bar because we were too short and it couldn't reach. This allows us to shift our center of gravity the slightest amount so we can reach that extra few inch, those extra few inches to get to the next part. Can we uh, deploy your climber and kind of just describe to us on each stage what's happening right. uh, with what bar? All right. Uh, so can you run the climber up? Like I said, it's just a standard climber. This is just a telescoping arm. It goes up, you hook onto, it goes above the bar that you want to climb. We go down until the passive hooks engage. So they come down and then they hook back on. And then the climber tilts backwards. Tilt it, tilt it, tilt it. <laughs> okay, and then it tilts backwards uh, and hooks onto the next stage and continues to climb. Well, Stipals, thanks a lot for taking time to tell us uh, more about your robot here. Uh, I've been a huge fan of this team for a while now and this year definitely does not disappoint uh, for your team. So can't wait to see it. Of course, how you do here at I2R I, uh, but future competition season as well. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Discover MSOE, where hands-on learning today can lead to real-world applications tomorrow, including their Wii Energy STEM Center built to support FIRST teams. Head on over to msoe.edu slash visit to see a virtual tour and schedule your campus visit today. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.